Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the new lecture on inflammatory bowel disease. The material for this lecture has been taken and adapted from Clinical Pharmacy and Therapeutics by Roger Walker, Pharmacology and Therapeutics by Waldman, Basic and Clinical Pharmacology by Bertan G. Kedzen. I am Shoy Muhammad, lecturer in the Department of Pharmaceutics, Faculty of Pharmacy, University of Sin. This is the outline of this lecture. Firstly, we will be discussing the inflammatory bowel disease and two of the diseases that are covered under inf inflammatory bowel disease that include the Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Then we will be discussing the signs and symptoms of the Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Uh, then we will go for the investigation and finally we will be discussing the treatment of the inflammatory bowel disease. So inflammatory bowel disease is actually a group of inflammatory conditions that can affect the colon and the small intestine and two of the medical conditions that come under the inflammatory bowel disease include the Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis. Here are the basic differences between the ulcerative colitis and the Crohn's disease. The ulcerative colitis can only affect the colon and the rectum. However, the Crohn's disease can affect any part of the digestive tract. The major causes of the ulcerative colitis include the overreaction of the immune system against the normal bacteria or microbial flora that are present into our gastrointestinal tract. Uh, this will result into the inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract, specifically the colon and the rectum. However, if other bacteria and viruses are present into the gastrointestinal tract and immune system can also activate against these bacteria and viruses and this will result into the ulcerative colitis. However, the causes of the Crohn's disease may include the immune system problems. Uh, which are maybe similar with the ulcerative colitis but there may also be certain uh, genetic problems or environmental factors may also be present uh, that will uh, uh, be factors of the Crohn's disease. So here we are discussing the signs and symptoms of the ulcerative colitis and the Crohn's disease and uh, we will differentiate between the ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Based on the symptoms, we can differentiate whether the patient is having ulcerative colitis or the Crohn's disease. So firstly, the prominent symptoms, the patients with the ulcerative colitis will be having the bloody diarrhea. However, in Crohn's disease, the patient will be having diarrhea, abdominal pain, weight loss up to 30% and there will be no gross bleeding into the patients of the Crohn's disease. If the we come to the symptom of the fever, the symptom of the fever will be present into the patients of uh, um, ulcerative colitis and the Crohn's disease with the same intensity. The two plus signs uh, in both of the columns show that the intensity of the fever is same. Then we come to the abdominal pain. The um, ulcerative colitis, the abdominal pain is variable. In some patients, there will be more uh, abdominal pain in other patients there may be less abdominal pain however into the Crohn's disease there will be some intensity of the uh, abdominal pain uh, that will be present into the patient uh, there is the same uh, intensity of the diarrhea in both the ulcerative colitis and the Crohn's disease uh, the rectal bleeding will be more in ulcerative colitis as compared to the Crohn's disease. The weight loss is uh, less prominent in ulcerative colitis. However, it is more prominent into the Crohn's disease. Then we, if we come to the science of the malnutrition, uh, they are less prominent into the ulcerative colitis and science of the malnutrition will be more prominent into the Crohn's disease. Then if we talk about the abdominal mass, there is no change into the abdominal mass into the ulcerative colitis. The negative sign shows that means there is no change into the 
uh, abdominal mass while into the crohn's disease there uh, are chances of the changes into the abdominal mass uh, if we talk about the dehydration the dehydration will be more into the ulcer ulcerative colitis as compared to the crohn's disease uh, if we talk about the iron deficiency anemia and raised c reactive protein erythrocyte sedimentation rate are uh, hypoalbuminemia uh, so these symptoms are same into the the intensity of these things are same into the ulcerative colitis as well as the crohn's disease now the signs and symptoms discussed into the last table were restricted to the gi tract however in uh, crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis the signs and symptoms will not only restrict be restricted to the gi tract but because uh, it will be causing the changes into the absorption of the many of the nutritional constituents so almost whole of the body will be affected with the signs and symptoms of the ulcerative colitis and the crohn's disease and these uh, signs and symptoms we will be call calling it as the extra intestinal features because these are occurring outside the gi tract so these will include the uitis uh, which is the inflammation of the eye the patient may also suffer with the liver disease problems uh, there will be chances of the ankylosing spondylitis that is a rare type of arthritis that can cause pain and uh, stiffness in your spinal cord or the spinal bones uh, there will be also peripheral arthritis the rest of the bones uh, will also be affected the the patients will be having uh, pain into the bones and the joints there are also uh, chances of the clubbing uh, of the fingers uh, which is the enlargement of the fingertips and the downward sloping of the nails the uh, patient may also be suffering from the pyoderma gangrenosum that is a rare inflammatory skin disease uh, where painful pustules or nodules become ulcers uh, and these can progressively grow and they can symptomatically be treated with the corticosteroids by local application or cyclosporin or infliximab so for these uh, conditions we have to give uh, other treatments to uh, heal or control the signs and symptoms of the ulcerative colitis and the crohn's disease the patient may also be suffering from the erythema nodosum there is a type of skin inflammation and is located in parts of the fatty layer of the skin uh, the other problems with the a patient will be restricted to the malnutrition for example there will be growth retardation nutrition will uh, will not be absorbed from the small intestine and the large intestine and some of the absorption will not be taking flame from the uh, colon or the rectum uh, there is our chances of the decreased absorption of the zinc and because of the low zinc the taste into the patient may be impaired uh, there are chances of the less absorption of the vitamin 12 and deficiency of the vitamin 12 that will result into the anemia decreased folate will result into anemia decreased iron can uh, lead to the anemia decreased vitamin k will uh, lead to the uh, bleeding chances into the persons potassium deficiency will lead to the lethargy and uh, calcium and magnesium deficiency can lead to the tetany vitamin c deficiency can lead to the scurvy and the patient may also be uh, having osteoporosis there will be weakness of the bones because calcium is not absorbing properly there will be weakness into the patient and because of the hypoproteinemia there may be oedema present into the patients as well in the investigations the endoscopy is the uh, most reliable diagnostic uh, test uh, that will give the confirmation of the inflammatory bowel disease however in certain of the situations the endoscopy cannot be performed where there is too much of the inflammation present into the intestine and the insertion of the cameras and the other equipment will lead to the uh, bleeding so in these situations we have to be very careful uh, for the performance of the endoscopy the other diagnostic tests are the radiological that may include the computer tomography 
scan CT scan are the magnetic uh, resonance imaging the MRI uh, these are the best radiological test and they can uh, locate and define the fistulae that are present or the abscess that are present into the Crohn's disease we can also go for the uh, stool test um, that will identify that whether the RBCs or the WBCs are present in, in the stools or not. Uh, there is any presence of the amoeba or the Clostridium difficile uh, into the stool and that will indicate that the patient may be suffering from any, any amoebic infection or the Clostridium difficile uh, infection. So basically these uh, stool tests will exclude the alternative diagnosis we will make sure that the uh, patient is suffering the problems uh, of bleeding and abdominal pain because of the inflammatory bowel disease or whether any other pathology is present into the gastrointestinal tract so for the further confirmation of the inflammatory bowel disease we can go for the other laboratory findings like we can go for the in, uh, determination of the inflammatory markers like the erythrocyte sedimentation rate or uh, determination of the C reactive proteins or uh, low hemoglobin levels or uh, raised platelet count that are the one of the indications uh, if the patient is suffering from the inflammatory bowel disease uh, if the inflammatory bowel disease has been present for a long period of time there will be changes into the ESR, CRP, hemoglobin and the platelet counts uh, the uh, inflammatory bowel disease is also affecting the absorption of the vitamin B12. Uh, so the there will maybe will be low quantities of the vitamin B12 with the patients of the inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, we can go for the uh, red cells count, folate, serum albumin, magnesium, calcium, zinc, and the count of the essential fat, fatty acids. Uh, and this will in uh, changes in the level of these important components will indicate the chronic inflammation or the malabsorption. There will be anti saccharomyces uh, CAVs antibodies present, and that is uh, that are one also the indication of the Crohn's disease. So basically, by performing these diagnostic tests, we will uh, make sure that any of the other pathologies are not present and the specific treatment for the inflammatory bowel disease can be carried out. So here is the treatment plan for the inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, you see here in through the table that based on to the severity of the uh, disease, the different types of the treatment can be given. If you see onto the left side of the table, the disease can be classified into the mild, moderate or severe states. And if you see uh, onto the right side, you can see the two stages uh, that is the responsive stage and the refractory stage. So, if the disease is at the uh, either at the mild or moderate state, the uh, treatment is very much responsive. However, as the disease moves to the moderate and the severe uh, stage, the treatment will be refractory. The drugs we are giving will not be effective for the treatment or there will be relapses of the symptoms of the disease. So firstly if the patient is suffering from the mild inflammatory bowel disease uh, we can prescribe the bodesonide and it is prescribed in the cases of the elitis that is the inflammation of the intestine. The topical steroids can be given into the proctitis uh, that is the inflammation of the inner of the rectum. The antibiotics can also be given because the microorganisms may also be present and 5 amino salicylates are also effective into the mild state. If you go into the uh, moderate stage, we can give the tissue necrotic factor antagonists that uh, are very helpful in decreasing the inflammation. We can administer the oral corticosteroids. We can go for the uh, methotrexate or we can go for either azathioprine or 6 mercatopurine as well. Into the last stage, uh, surgery is also one of the options when the drugs are not effective and the inflammation is so severe, so surgery may also be ordered. Uh, the drugs may include in at this uh, stage the netlizumab, the cyclosporine, uh, Tissue necrotic factor antagonists can also be prescribed and at this stage 
the catechosteroids will be given through the intravenous route. So here is the list of the drugs from the different classes that can be prescribed for the treatment of the inflammatory bowel disease. This includes the aminosalicylates which include sulfasalazine and olasalazine. Uh, the glucocorticoids, uh, the prednisone and the prednisolone can be prescribed for the treatment of the inflammatory uh, bowel disease. Uh, from the class of the anti-metabolites, which are the drugs which are basically given for the treatment of the uh, cancerous disease. But in this situation, uh, these drugs are very much effective for the treatment of the inflammatory bowel disease. This includes the azathioprine, 6 mercaptopurine and uh, methotrexate. Uh, the next class is the anti-tumor necrotic factors uh, antibodies. Uh, these basically affect the specific sites uh, of the inflammatory cells and decrease the inflammation. And they decrease the uh, inflammatory factors. These include the infliximab and adalimumab. And finally the integrin, uh, uh, integrins that include the netlizumab. So this is all about the inflammatory bowel disease. Thank you very much for your time.